evening, ladies and gentlemen. You can clap, it's fine. I, this is when we need a laugh track, but I refuse to use one, I truly do. Thanks to COVID and everything, yes, it's, you know, I have one, two, three, three people in the audience, and Elton's sequestered over there. Ricky's Elton tonight. <laughs> And Denise looks like she's going to an all-you-can-eat buffet with the shield. So we're good. We've got enough people in the air. Uh, good evening. Welcome to Gem City tonight. I was supposed to be, um, for those who know me well, Magnum P.I. is my dad. Looks just like Magnum P.I. He's got the, the for, in the 80s, had the jet black hair, the nose, the mustache, the whole nine yards. All he would do was put on shorts, the shirt, and sunglasses and win every costume contest known to man. I was like, that's not fair. You're just, you're changing one outfit. So I was gonna do it and put it on, and I, but I hadn't put the shorts on before since COVID. And those shorts fit like a cheap hotel. There was no ballroom. <laughs> Nothing, just, I was like, that's, no. Looks like I'm smuggling grapes in the wrong place. <laughs> Not good. So I decided I was gonna go as Indiana Jones, but everyone, as soon as I walked out, everyone on the crew was like, crikey, mate! I was like, all right, so I'm Steve Irwin. Fantastic, that worked. So, anyway, welcome to our second Halloween episode. That was a long, that was a lot of build up, yeah, whatever. Well, uh, yes, it is our Halloween episode, which means at every social distance Halloween party you will be going to, wherever it may be, uh, you will have the staple outfits, six feet apart, of course. You're gonna have the sexy version of everything. I don't understand why they do this every year, but grown adults get the sexy version of anything. The sexy crayon, the sexy hamburger, no special sauce. The sexy, see? What? Oh, cause I'm the bad gay. Okay, there's a whole new meaning to the big whopper. Sexy tiger, not king. Sexy, sorry, I just pictured that. Sexy, oh this is not gonna get out of there now. Mm. Sexy Freddy Krueger, that's okay. And then my personal favorite this year for 2020, the sexy coronavirus, which I'm gonna get into that later. So put a pin in that. Yes, it's a real thing. You can be the sexy coronavirus. They actually did the life-size hand sanitizer. But by the way, don't Google the outfit because what comes up, the results are not pretty at all. And plus it won't fit in your Amazon Prime box. It's like, it's the little thing and it's like a, you know those plastic um, it just stopped. umbrellas? Just <laughs> it, I did this and that was enough. Hand -jiving. <laughs> I'm hand jiving for no reason. Anyway, but yes, the Halloween costumes always vary from year, year to year. And normally they touch on hot button issues. In fact, it's been predicted that in 2020, this fantastic year, our most popular outfit is gonna be the I want to speak to the manager or the Karen as we all know it, which I went through the list actually. It comes with an asymmetrical bob wig, oversized glasses, a Chevy Tahoe or, or What's the other one? Oh, a Land Rover. Uh, three unsupervised children that have been given espresso and a Michael Coors purse, but spelled C-O-O-R-S, like the beer. Yeah. Now you can actually buy the custom Karen mask. Have you seen this thing? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, that. it's $180 and it's the scariest thing I've ever seen. Can we pull the photo up real quick for it? Yeah, that thing. Have you, have, can you see that over in the audience? Yeah. That is, I think I had that teacher in third grade. <laughs> Fred, you have that in the... No, but I will today. Yeah, you're what told, thank you, you're welcome. Jim City of the Night. Just you're... sets up a makeshift store. Oh, that is just <laughs> You have sketch. to be the cashier. <sighs> of course, since 2020 decides to screw us in every aspect humanly possible, we actually got it this year that Halloween is on a Saturday with a full moon and we get daylight savings so you get to sleep in an extra hour. Yeah, no, it was perfect. Where the hell are you gonna go party? But it's a full moon, so everybody's gonna be out. So all you pagans and kagans, you know, you moons and star cats and kittens. Yeah, I said it. Break out your copper bowls. Don't forget to go get your goat and good luck finding a virgin to sacrifice. UD is around the corner though. What? It's a Catholic system. Are they even in school? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I had a couple, uh, couple people come <laughs> it's in. a Catholic school, that means they're automatically virgin. I had a couple of people come into the, the other job I do and they were looking to pick something up, a um, little sidebar. And they're like, we want to look really, really retro. And I was like, okay, I don't, what, are you, what are you looking for? And they, went, they said, turtlenecks. Uh. <laughs> that's, that's retro to you guys, that's old school. We're kicking it old school, turtlenecks. 
They're like, yeah. You know, the ones you fold down and wear with a blazer. I was like, you mean the thing I wore at Christmas last year? Great. If anyone needs me, I'm going to have a V8 and go do my Pilates. Jesus. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> Obviously, we are still going to do it as we normally can, but we are going to keep social distancing as COVID is still a substantial threat as always. But people have to get inventive. For instance, right here in the great Buckeye State, if you haven't heard, a Cincinnati reg resident, I don't know why I said that, Andrew Beatty, if you're Andrew, if you're watching, I hope you got your name right. Good first name, by the way. Invented a candy chute down his front steps so it helps maintain the social distance. Obviously, he cleans the tube, everything's in wrappers, it's totally fine. And I was like, well, why don't, I don't know where he came up with the idea, but as an adult, we all think, you know, we definitely want to improve on this. So today in the studio, yeah, we have a giant ice luge in the shape of a hand sanitizer bottle. Yeah, we don't. We don't. I wish we did. Because technically alcohol goes through it, right? Right. I don't, but I don't want the hand sanitizer. I want like vodka or some fruity. Someone has got to have made, and back me up if anybody's heard this in the audience. Someone has got to have made a hand sanitizer drink. Well, like a, like, like a mixed a... cocktail or something. Something, somebody's got to have invented one by now. At the beginning of quarantine, there was the quarantini. That, okay, that's what I was maybe thinking of. Well, I don't... <laughs> right? That'll kill that, anything. That doubles. <laughs> that kills everything. Moonshine it is. Including memories. <laughs> yeah. Bank accounts, memories, marriages. It breaks everything. Okay, so maybe I'm kidding. We don't actually have a... Maybe I have an ice luge here, but that would have been really exciting. Speaking of COVID ruining pretty much everything we hold near and dear to our hearts. Uh, books have now been affected by COVID and it's already hitting a grocery shelf near you. Yeah, and I'm not talking about medical books and I'm, I'm talking about the actual strain has a book about it. And I'm talking about that stuff on the grocery stores, that Fabio on the cover, Lorenzo, take me to the barn and have your way with me. Oh, I've never seen you before. Give me a brick. <laughs> Why are they only brick anyway? I'm sure that's not what you dressed up as. Just undo one more that's button. A, I know. See, no, actually, if I unbutton unbutton one more button, I'm going to get you, I have to get you like a cocktail. Oh, okay. Yeah, I feel like a pool boy. Steve Irwin, the pool boy? <laughs> it's all right, Jerry Fowler. It's a niche. Place. Jerry Fowler will call me. It's totally fine. Oh, see what I did? I pulled back from the last episode. Uh, I pulled, that's a callback. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, the book, yes, getting back to this, is called Kissing the Coronavirus. I paused because I wanted to let to set that sit in. Yeah, Kissing the Coronavirus. The book is selling on Amazon for 99 cents. And by the way, a uh, brief uh, little fun fact, the reason I learned about this. Do me a favor, can I get a, uh, can I get a shot on Elton John over here at the piano? <laughs> yes. Can I? I can found I, can, it in my book club we, yeah, group. Can, no, I'm dead sick. Can, can we get her? Yeah, <laughs> Ricky different. read it. I did. Ricky read it. It's only 16 pages. Yeah. 99 cents comes with a four-star rating, ironically all named by women by Karen, except you. <laughs> I didn't So the it. book was written by a guy, MJ Edwards, and... No, that's you, a female. Oh, it's a female? Yeah. Oh, yep. making so much more sense. Because <laughs> <coughs> I saw the cover of the book. It's okay. It's like... The sexy. book written by, you know, MJ Edwards, is the classic Shakespearean tale of a research scientist that falls in love with a bad boy, only this time the bad boy. Is COVID. It's a specimen in a test tube which takes over the co worker who turns into the green living version of COVID. There's more to it. Are yeah. you shitting me with this right now? And I can say that. I'm not sure how this thing got four stars, but it got over, what, 300 reviews on Amazon and 1,000 on Goodreads? Yeah, but, it went viral. But it must be, it's the most descriptive erotica you ever heard about COVID. Sent the worst sentence I never thought I'd say. And it has lines like this. His tongue, so soft and hot, like a chunk of microwaved fish sloshing around inside her mouth. <laughs> mm. <coughs> I'm gonna, mm, can I, mm, go, go. <laughs> I have that pre-throw up sound. Mm. Yeah. I don't know about you, but those are 17 words that I never want to put in the same sentence ever again, let alone in reference to the coronavirus. <sighs> Moving on to 
other things. Tonight's show is actually really, really fun. Uh, it's all about October, so we're going to do some pumpkin carving. We have a haunted house expert here, and of course, boobs, like you do. We'll be talking to uh, Fred from Hell's Dungeon, and for those who don't know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we have two great ladies coming in to talk about something that affects one in eight women over the course of their lifetime, so something near and dear, especially in my family as well. Our final segment, we actually get to play with sharp objects, Elton John and Steve Irwin, by the way, I want to point out that only one of those people is alive due to sharp objects. So this does not bode well for me. <laughs> Just pointing that out. And I, I, I still have to use the rounded scissors. It's okay, I so will hold the, you closer. Yeah, in the next episode, if I come out and I'm like, welcome to Gem City tonight, thanks, you'll know why. So we can only have an eight count then. Mm. And my final two fun facts before we jump into the rest of this is we stumbled upon that Vegas just released the odds who will be performing the 2021 Super Bowl halftime show in all raging great places, Tampa Bay. Yeah, because when I think big party, I think Tampa. Yeah, just like when I think, I'm getting drunk tonight. You want to, Billy, let's get drunk. What are we doing? White wine spritzers! What? Hey. No. I get drunk on White Claws. You're 106 pounds and the last drink you had, Reagan was president. So, yeah, but back to the Vegas odds. It's like 160 to 1 that they actually, who's going to do it? Top of the list, Taylor Swift. Okay. I could do some T-Swift for, that's fine. After Adam, Adam Levine shamed all of us and took his shirt off last year. Thanks, dude. Appreciate you. <laughs> Thanks. Who wants to play football? <laughs> Jackass. The following runners-up were Adele, Rihanna, and Ariana Grande. So... Yeah, basically, we, the NFL wants us to break up with 2020, which I'm totally okay with. I'm fine with. And finally, because it is right around the corner, we get to urge you to get out and make your voice heard. Yes, I'm talking about, of course, NASA's vote to name the next Mars rover. Now, they actually went to the smartest group of people you could possibly think of. It was all the students, K through 12. They did it to 150 different schools and all of those students, and they actually wanted to give it a shot so next time we put one on the surface of Mars, the red planet. And after all the voting, the tallies, they settled on... Drum roll, please. Rovi McRoverson. <laughs> yeah. Rovi McRoverson. Which, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty cute. But I just want to hear some NASA official who went to MIT, he studied nuclear physics. This guy has more degrees than I have limbs. I want him to hear... All right, we're, uh, we're approaching the surface of Mars. Uh, that is correct. All right, uh, latitude, uh, do your latitude and longitude. All right, that is correct. Uh, we have, uh, that is correct, we have touched down. Roby McRoberson's on the ground! <laughs> He's like, I hate my job. <laughs> oh, boom, we got a great show for you. So, stick around. Elton, you want to play me in? Where? <laughs> this is about all I know. That I'm not even playing a song at this point. <laughs> I think that's Mary Had a Little Lamb, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, for those who don't know, uh, Jay, if you're watching at home, uh, Jay, Jay did come down with uh, a couple symptoms, so we urged him, obviously, for the safety of everybody to stay home. So, Jay, I know you're watching at home. We love you, miss you. Get your bearded butt back here. If you, you stayed home too me. long, I did shave today. I could start rapping. You, you could start rapping. Finally. No, you're not going to rap. <laughs> I'm already mic'd. When I want to cancel the show, I'll go ahead and do it. All right. So our... Ooh, I am. There I am. How you doing? Hey, here you go. So our desk piece today, as yeah, everybody knows, has a desk piece. Is that even, speaking of Halloween, I'm, I've got a couple of people in the audience. How are you doing Halloween this year? Because you have uh, two kids. I do have two kids. I don't what know. Are you, are you dressing them up with something? Like, like Chucky and Bride of Chucky? I wish, but Charlotte really wants to be a witch. And Sebastian needs to be a monster. Okay, that works. So, Denise, what are you doing? This. <laughs> She's coming this to the This is pretty TV. scary, I, I will give you that. <laughs> She's going to be a camera operator. This is pretty scary. It'd only be scary if it's at Fox News. <laughs> Ladies, Fred? We're actually opening up to do a uh, social distancing trick for the kids on Halloween. So that's how I'm going to spend my time. Well, that's, that's awesome. That's what I'm doing. Ladies? Around the corner. <laughs> no plans, nothing. 
Don't look at me. I'm not doing. I'm not doing a thing. I gotta work. I think. Probably. So as we were talking about costumes and earlier, and God, I, that, I still can't get over that Karen mask. That's you want me to buy it? Buy it? Yeah. I'll just... That? Yes, that. <laughs> oh. Actually, you make me mad enough. I probably would look like that. I. I could do it. You... I won't cut my hair. I can pin it up. That's not. Good. Are you wearing cow skin boots? Yes. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Just want to be on the same page. I mean, <laughs> they're so, fake. It's not a real cow. Yeah. That's just in my cheeseburgers. So we did a top ten list of the most popular Halloween costumes people that have requested, you know, to be made or bought. Uh, number ten, Harley Quinn. I can see that. There you go. That's kind of a staple go-to, isn't it? Lately. Yeah. For those who do like Comic Con, whatever, it's kind of a staple go-to, and there's multiple ways to do it. Uh, the Karen, the Karen, sexy Nurse Ratchet. Does anybody know who Nurse Ratchet is? There's that show on Netflix called Ratcheted, and it's about Nurse Ratchet who was in One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, who was like, it was so, it was a movie in ooh god the seventies. Lowell, back me up. You were what 112 in the seventies? Oh god. I think Nicholson, I think I I think Jack, I just heard a little. Isn't it off. Jack Nicholson? Yeah, Jack Nicholson, Danny DeVito, Chris Lloyd, and they're all in an insane asylum, and it's actually it's a great movie. Um, but Nurse Ratchet actually is like messes with their medication, or whatever, and like she helps in this version. She helps like people that are getting tortured, like to get free, and then it kind of works against her and plays with her brain. It's actually not bad. It's got that chick from um, American Horror Story. American Horror Story, Sarah whatever her name Paulson. is. Sarah Paulson. Thank you. Fred for the win. Um, this one I wanted. I hope guys pull this one off. Sexy Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> First off, RBG. Rest in peace. Thank you for all you've done. Um, but yeah, I mean like the, my niece dressed up as Baby Ginsburg. Oh my God, it was the cutest thing. She had like one of the white wigs. Oh, it was so cute. She did this last year. I wanted to dress her up as Sophia from the Golden Girls. So have the little white with the big glasses. Picture it. Italy, 1921. Picture it. They were everywhere. It was, uh, she, like, if you go back and watch the Golden Girls, it was savage to each other. Oh, it was great. Um, Tiger or Tiger King. Okay. You just dressed up as the tiger and then someone is Tiger King. I mean. I guess. I guess, or you could be Doc Antle and then his little. Okay, I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the series to come out. I'm Doc Antle. Did you guys watch Tiger King? Mm -hmm. This is like four. I'm like four four months. He got arrested, or he's being charged right now. Oh, he did. Yeah. Ooh. Keep up with your Tiger King news. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on the Karen still here. Remember? <laughs> yeah. You like my mug. Yeah. Stop putting it up. That's Greg. Greg, I know you're doing that back there. I know you're putting it up. Greg, keep right. that up. That way I don't have to nag. Uh, the Carol Baskin. Okay. Okay. Like we're printing frizzy hair. Carol Baskin. Um, I don't know why. Number three, Joe Biden. Just a fly on the head? Just, like no, that just... was Pence. Oh, you know you're right. That was Pence. That thing was up there for two and a half minutes. <laughs> that fly was on his head for two minutes. That thing got more airtime than Pence did. They are selling the action figure on Amazon of the fly. So, like, fly, like... I'm... Oh, I am made of questions right now. What? You can buy a fake action figure version of the fly that was on his head on Amazon. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Uh, number two, Trump. And number one... I don't know if I can say this. Can I say this on there? I don't remember what it says, so yeah. Yeah. The coronavirus. What are you going to dress up as? Bacteria. So, honestly. Sexy bacteria. Sexy bacteria? Poison ivy without the leaves. Maybe? Like green with red spots. Like, you know, your bacteria emoji? Just like a slutty green dress with red dots on 2020, it. 2020, just failing us all again. Look, now I'm giving them my Halloween ideas over here. Seriously. By the way, if you're watching the show, please, if you do any, any of these, I really kind of want to see the sexy guy, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I might just do that one. It's pretty simple, a wig, a robe, the white, I forget what this thing is called. 
She had the white. It's this lost thing. up on me. Just a collar? Collar. Oh. Mm. Okay. It's really just her collar? It's got a, it's got a name. But I want to see that one. And then if anyone does the coronavirus, please, please send that in. All right. When I come back, we're going to get into some guests. We're going to have some fun. So please stick around for more Gem City tonight. It wasn't always like this. My friends were slowly going away. They found other people. And their world was slowly revolving around me. With my classes becoming harder and harder, and the constant stress of applying to college, it seemed like suicide was the answer to all of this. It was so easy to do, right there, right there and then. I could have done it, but someone reached out to me. This person actually cared for me, talked to me, and understood me. Suicide is never the answer. Know the signs, find the words, and reach out. Uh, all right, whoa, here we are over here now. All right, welcome back to Gem City tonight. My first guest in sticking with the Halloween theme is uh, actually the best goatee I've seen in a while, but he's also the owner of Hell's Dungeon Haunted House. Please put it together for Fred Herm. I don't know how we did it. Well, ah, see, that is actually socially acceptable. And we are six feet apart, we did measure. Ooh. Chairs aren't. <laughs> they're uh, a little tight. You want the stool? They're in <laughs> yeah, the stool. Yeah, the stool. Will be <laughs> so thank you for coming on the show, sir. Thank you for having us. Oh. So, uh, Hell's Dungeon. Yes, sir. How, when was this a brainchild? Did you take it over? No, this is all uh, from me, my mind. I started, I'm retired Air Force, retired in 2014. Thank you for your service. Appreciate it. 2010, right as I was getting ready to. Uh, get set up for my retirement. Uh, my father passed away and I started doing a lot of thinking and stuff of what I wanted to do when I retired. And I uh, went into a uh, local Halloween store and got hooked. And from there it just took off from uh, just a little spot in my head to a 40,000 square foot all indoor haunt. Uh, we're the only all indoor haunt that's, there's probably only 10 in the whole United States that's completely all indoors. Really? As in queue line waiting, bathrooms, concession stands. The only way you had to wait outside with us is if you got, if we got over eight, about about 800 people in, and of course we got to set you outside. But other than that, we are the only one within Ohio that's completely 100% all indoors. Wow. Uh, so uh, we're located over at 3066 Linden Avenue. Right. We're in the rear of the property. Uh, we're underneath the thrift store there. Everybody knows the thrift store in East Town on Linden. Right. So we keep telling people we're behind there. Uh, and like I said, uh, we got three different are two different attractions this year, but next year we're going to have a total of four. We just wanted to get the doors open for the season and make sure that you know we provide the best show that we can. Uh, we're still working every day. We're still busting our butt to get the best show. So it's a this is like a twenty. This is a three hundred sixty five day thing. For you. No, no, we're actually we're not. We're just going to run through the holidays. Oh, and I mean like we'll, the business. You're oh, the business. This. Yes, yes. Yeah. This is my this is my life. This is my savings. This is everything I've busted my butt for and. Uh, but my team that uh, we're building a family over there. We're building a hot family. It's not employees. They're, they're our family. We've got employees ranging anywhere from 12 years old up to, well, I'm not going to say how old I am, but you know. Uh, older than 12. Uh, older than 12, we'll say. Yeah. And uh, we're trying to do special things over there. It's not just about the haunts or the screams or the yells or the money. It's about trying to get back to the community. Uh, I don't, uh, we've uh, adopted a family that uh, we encourage people to go to our Facebook website our Facebook and our website and look up Smiles for Allie. Okay. Um, it's a little young lady that uh, she was, her dad tried to basically smother her, strangle her, and uh, give her, I get choked up talking about her because she's just the sweetest little thing. But she, she went and the, dealt the best hands in life, but she smiles all the time. She loves hauling houses. 
And her dad reached out to me and said, hey, can we come? And I said, I want you all to be our first customers. So we brought the whole family through for a dollar. Uh, and after that, once we got to know the family, we found out the story. We're doing a fundraiser for them to help cover medical bills. We're trying to get enough money to buy my handicap accessible wheelchair van. So I can sit here and talk all day about my haunt, but it's really not about the haunt. It's about giving back to the community. We also have a nonprofit organization that we work with uh, called Helping Hands. Is there anything you don't do? <laughs> Sleep. Sleep. Okay, I don't I'll give do that. that. I, uh, but uh, every Friday night, if you bring in a new unwrapped toy, we give you two dollars off admission. Uh, we're also working with the, trying to work with the uh, pink ribbon ladies as well to do a pink out uh, night. They they just now found that out, but. We've been working with that because uh, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but my mother, she uh, she she had breast cancer, as well as a couple other and uh, cancers as well, and cancer runs in our family. So, being in the military, I learned you got to get back to the community community because without the community, you're nothing. Without the community, you're not on the air, and you know we're trying to do the same there, and of course pay the bills. You know we got to pay the bills, but if I can, if you see Alex smile, you'll it, it melts your heart, and and it really makes it worth everything that my family's doing for them so well we're definitely gonna have links and everything yes, up on our website we to appreciate get over to you of course yes, yeah. we appreciate it so. so the attractions you said you have yes. two this year you have four yeah. next year how do you pick the attractions and what what would define an attraction it's whatever goes on inside this little head really because <laughs> okay. we, we try to mix it up because uh, what, have, the, what have previous ones been well like i said with us nothing Nothing, because this is our first year. Uh, I've never worked in a haunted house. I've never owned a haunted house. Uh, I've got some friends in Louisville that's really mentored me, and a guy out in, uh, in Connecticut that's mentored me. And uh, you sit down and just go over ideals. Okay. And uh, every year, things are going to get better and better. We This year, we have basically three different themes. We have a Backwood Bayou theme. Who uh, We have Husk as our keeper of the... Uh, outdoors then we have a asylum theme so we have a whole haunted house or a whole asylum scene theme set up and some of my family members yes yes and we're, we're still looking for more people so you know if they're uh, interested please please send me a reservation number I'm, I'm, I'm they can sit right next to me because i need to be in there half the time myself so uh but then we also have a uh, circus theme and we've got a uh, one heck of a uh, 3d haunt that people just People love clowns. You know, they hate them. But no, they don't. No, they don't. I, I wish I could have brought a lot of them in here. Because yeah, that's what four minutes meant. <laughs> um, okay. Well, we're going to get back to not clowns. Okay. But I do want to touch on one or more things. So you yes, stick sir. around for a second? Yes, sir. I'd be more than happy to. All right. Well, I don't know where I'm going. We'll be right back with more Gym City tonight. On August 11th, my brother Max wrote these words and hanged himself. He was only 15, and he had his whole life ahead of him but he was tormented and bullied until hopeless and alone, he took his own life. Though Max's pain is gone, the pain of his family will last a lifetime. Don't let this tragedy repeat itself. If you or someone you know is speaking or thinking about suicide, talk to an adult. What wouldn't you do to stop it? <laughs> that was beautiful, thank you. Thanks. Your, I'll learn something your, your before the day's over. Are unparalleled. <laughs> Welcome back to Gem City tonight. We're talking with Fred from Hell's Dungeon. So you said you uh, before we went to break, not talking about the clowns, not talking about the clowns, um, but you said you've got mentored and stuff. Yes, so how, how how many employees do you have? First off, we have a total of right at sixty right now. Okay, uh, we have ten full time that we keep around throughout the year. Uh, then the rest of them are, like I said, are actors and stuff. So we we, we range about forty five actors a night. Okay. So, so when just like jumping back into it, you said you were mentored. How does one reach out? You know, like I don't, I don't think you could just Google. Do you just Google haunted houses and like who put them up? Or how did you? No, how, I did, got, how did the connection happen? Once again, it, it, the haunted house industry is a family, and that's what I learned. Uh, long story short, my friend down in Louisville, uh, Travis Bowling is his name. I had had hand surgery. They had just bought a warehouse that had a bunch of props in it. I said, I'd love to come up there and help or to get stuff, but I just had hand surgery. I can't do it. He said, we've got to get this stuff out of here and bring a trailer. So their, their haunt family loaded me up six 20-foot trailers, Whoa. and I didn't have to lift a, lift a 
hand to help. Nice. So, you know, I suckered him is what I tell him now. <laughs> but uh, but from there, we, we just hit it off, and he knew what I was doing. He knew my intentions, and same as his, being a big heart, being a part of the community. And he just took me in, same way with my buddy in Connecticut. We met through buying props, and uh, Bobby's been great to me up there. And just to show me the ins and outs, show me, you know, everybody's decoration is different. Right. So what I might decorate mine, hon, as everybody decorates different. But it's just about the leadership, the mentorship, uh, a lot that I learned in the military. So not only are, am I learning from them, they're learning from me as well. Nice. So that, that's how we got together on that. So to bring it back to community, because we're big into suicide awareness on this show, and you know, obviously bringing causes, we'll have the Pink Ribbon Girls on here in a second. Um, you are going to do, you said you're going to do a trick or treat. On, yes, sir. Yes, so sir. we're just announcing a surprise. Uh, we, he's just coming in guns blazing. <laughs> surprises she, everywhere. Well, when Ricky called me and we talked, she she just thought we were a haunted house. And the more and more she we talked, she was like, "Wow, this is you know just not about a haunted house." And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to come out here and talk about Hell's Dungeon right. and what we do in our mission. Uh, but we know with the COVID and everything this year, things are going to be crazy. And we do practice social distance over there. We have a COVID plan that we had to get approved by the health department to open with our. You know, our actors wearing masks, you have to wear masks six feet apart. We make sure that we time our groups to where you don't get interacted and bunched up with another group. You come with your group, you go through with your group. Right. Uh, so what we want to do is with the way COVID's done this year, we like, you can't blame the kids for the, for the problem. So we're going to have them dress up. We're going to do a full lights on. Uh, we're not going to scare them. We may have a few in characters and stuff like that, but it's not going to be a full fledged. It's just going to, it's going to be about the kids. And that will be October 31st from three to five. So a safe option for those who yes. not knowing yes. where to go. Yes, and we'll have bags, you know, gloved up gloves or a candy bagged up to hand out and stuff. So we're, we're excited. Like I said, I just put it out there last night to my to my employees, and I've already had, you know, I say we got 60 or sixty to 70 employees. We've actually had 80 people say, hey, me and my cousin's going to be there to hand out candy for the kids. So. That's awesome. Yes, sir. So thank you for coming on the show. Yes, sir. I appreciate that it. Was, you did not preface me to all the cool stuff they did. I kind of did the other day. You were you were just gonna be like, don't I was worry, like, hey, you're really I wanna, gonna like it. I want to update you on Hell's Dungeon, and you're like, yeah, we'll get to it, and then we never had a meeting. <laughs> hey, well, actually, I, I, I like down. the surprises, so I like it. <laughs> well, please have them come out and visit. You know, this is literally our fifth weekend, uh, our fifth day open was last night, uh, so we're getting better and better each week. That's my time, I guess. <laughs> shut up. Was that loud? Enough? How <laughs> not the first time I've been told to shut up. Tell us, how do we find you on social media real quick? Uh, we, we have Facebook. I call it T-Witter. They all laugh at me. We have an Instagram account. And, of course, we at SurviveHellsDungeon.com. Do not go to HellsDungeon.com. Go to okay. SurviveHellsDungeon.com, please. Disclaimer. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much Good for coming thing. on the Appreciate show. Air high five. Gotcha. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Ricky, and thank you all so much. Of course. All right. We'll be right back with more Gym City tonight. I had to make it loud enough. <laughs> you can hit more than one note. There's like 20 keys there. Stop putting the Karen mask up. It was a different one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm sorry. It's all right. Sorry. You're all right. Sorry. Make noise. That's fantastic. Welcome back to Gem City tonight. You you've got this like Elton meets oh, Phantom of the Opera, kind of with the the undone candelabra. Well. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I could have worn a mask with glasses. That's true. Well, you're like 15 feet apart. All right, we are back with more Gem City tonight. My next guest, continuing with the October theme, uh, they one is working with a great organization. What has benefited from this organization? So put your hands together for Pink Ribbon Ladies, Amber Treadwell, and Nicole Smith. <laughs> Ladies. 
Please, high five. What's up? What's up? Thank you, 2020. Yeah. <laughs> I would normally come around and press the flesh, but that's not a thing. No. So, thank you for coming on the show, ladies. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, like you said, it affects one in eight women, and it's it been affected someone in my family. So, it's something that, and that's one of the things that I, I love. And as we were talking about, like booking you for the segment, it isn't just you know, it as a as a man, it affects a mother, a wife, a sister. Mm -hmm. On, on, a, on a whole different level. Hmm. So that's why I was like really interested and wanted to have you guys on. So thank you for coming. Thanks for having us. So, uh, Nicole, I'll start with you. Sure. You're the director of programming. I am. So what does that entail? So I essentially make sure that all of our programs are as they should be in every single region. So Pink Ribbon Girls, for the folks who don't know, we provide meals, house cleaning, rights to treatment uh, to folks who've been diagnosed with breast and or gynecological cancer. And right now we are serving Dayton, Columbus, Northern Kentucky, parts of Indiana, St. Louis, Missouri, and the Bay Area. So you're busy. I am. <laughs> <laughs> that would be accurate, yeah. So um, it's just been um, an interesting year. We recently hit our 500,000 meals served since 2012. That's awesome. um, 48 of those meals went to myself. I don't know if you received me. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's just a, it's a great organization. Um, we are busy, and COVID hasn't helped things. But you know we're going to do what we can do because cancer doesn't stop, so we can't. <laughs> How has everything changed from 2019 to 2020 with all the social distancing and guidelines? And what kind of major changes did you have to make? I think just the way that we interact with people. Um, you know, we're a nonprofit. Uh, we are expanding and into this national platform, but it's still a challenge. We still got to bring dollars through the doors to to support our clients. So not being able to have a lot of in-person events and having hybrid models and trying to be safe to make sure that we're safe, our survivors are safe, and our, our respective stakeholders are safe. It's a it's quite a feat, but we're getting it done. It's October, and we uh, you know we we do what we need to do. How long have you been with the organization? I've been with Pink Ribbon Girls since 2018, and I started off like Amber as a survivor. I was diagnosed in 2016. Um, young survivor, diagnosed at 29 years old, didn't know what the heck was going on. I was a police officer here in the Miami Valley at the time, and shortly after that, um, you know, got plugged into Pink Ribbon Girls. They gave me a lot of support, a lot of guidance, and uh, were just there for me in a way that I couldn't imagine. So I knew. Um, I will often say during meetings, you guys can't get rid of me. I'm, I'm here now. So <laughs> I resigned from my post and I've um, been working with PRG ever since. Nice. Yeah. Cool over to you. Yes. Or Amber over to you. Yes. Looked you dead in the eye. It's, it's been okay. <laughs> we look um, alike. <laughs> um, so, Survivor. I am. So, you uh, young as well. What's yes. your story? Yes. I was diagnosed at 31, actually, just this year in February. I was diagnosed on my birthday, so that was a hard call Not to take. Not happy birthday. Yes, yeah. no. My doctor called me first thing in the morning, and he told me my pathology report came back, and it was cancerous. So that started my journey, and I got connected with Pink Ribbon Girls. Um, I received Mills that she was talking about. So, yeah, it's just been a journey this year. I'm still in my reconstruction process, so eventually I'll get my expander out, and I'll have an implant placed, and... I'm cancer free. So, Congratulations. Yes, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, I was diagnosed. I didn't have a family history. Um, all the genetics tests came back negative. So it's just been kind of crazy this year. 2020 has not been a great year for anybody. Yeah, thanks. So, 2020 yeah, just, just exactly. Go home. So I'm definitely looking forward to next year. So, how was your experience? Obviously, um, Nicole, you were able to do it seeing in doctors and persons and so forth. But for 2020, how was it? What was it like? Were you doing Zoom meetings? Were you, I mean, did you have to go in? And, yeah, I actually. I mean, obviously you had to go in for some stuff. Right, right? no, know. all my appointments, they were in office. Um, I had my surgery scheduled in April and then the governor canceled all elective surgeries. So even though you think breast cancer, like that's not uh, elective. Yeah, this is elective to me. Yeah, they were still evaluating surgeries on a case-by-case -case basis to see like, is yours essential right now? Can we wait and hold off? Because they were trying to protect the PPE and the things they had on hand. So it was definitely scary, you know, just waiting and having someone in the office controlling like your destiny at that time. Right. So yeah, it's been a journey. Well, we went from potted house to heavy stuff. Yeah. I like it. Well, we're gonna go to commercial real quick, but I still have, I'm made of questions on some other fun things. We're, gonna, right. we're gonna kick it up to fun after we get back. <laughs> we like fun. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back with more density tonight. You wanna play us out? 
<laughs> oh, no. Even find? Oh, good. Where did I find this? I'm loving which commercial right as this falls. <laughs> oh, yeah. The ghosts fantastic. are coming out. <laughs> Heart and soul, right? Yeah. This is like a. This sounds know. like one of the pianos you'd have in your haunted house. <laughs> yeah. It's my kid's piano. <laughs> it's. Where did you even get that thing? Sam's Club. I was like the baby sell, Liberace collection. They sell them again this year around the holidays if you if you would like to buy one. I think to go it needs with a tune-up. Baby Liberace. Yeah, no kidding. Right? <laughs> Especially you know. want that creepy like the kid playing. With, Mommy, bring yeah. your food from the oh. other room. Like, Still stuck in the haunted house thing. So, um, what do survivors, you're both clear, mm -hmm. uh, which is amazing. Oh, by the way, can we just for that? Yay, thank both you. of them? That's awesome. So what, um, obviously you have I'm probably like are in touch with people who are going through it. What do you say to someone who has just been diagnosed or is in remission or has come back? I mean, Nicole, starting with you, what sure. would you say? I think the biggest thing is just to uh, follow your instincts and to be an advocate for yourself. At 29 years old, um, it, it, this wasn't supposed to happen to me, right? Like this is just something that is not supposed to happen. Um, but just something, uh, and Amber spoke to it as well, is just something instinctual that says something's not right. So just following up and doing those things that you're supposed to be doing, um, that's the biggest advice. And then when you are talking to your doctors and something doesn't seem right, ask the questions and, and ask until you understand so you, um, you're just making the best choices for your health. I would tell them to reach out and find a support system. Um, organizations like the Pink Ribbon Girls um, or just other cancer survivors because they can help you with what they've been through already and for you to kind of have a first-hand knowledge and understanding about what you're going to go through. So definitely reach out to the resources in the community and then Facebook, there's groups, Galora. Um, you can definitely find people on there that have went through what you're going through. So um when was my mom kind of went through a scare and when we found out that she was free and clear and everything we had the party of all parties so when you guys were clear and everything how did you i mean it's it's got to be i assume a relief i have no idea but did you celebrate or is it did you do some white wines did you get the karens involved <laughs> i i think for me um the biggest and amber's doing it she's doing it right now which is so awesome our village just comes around um in such a strong way with pink ribbon girls uh so i started i mean i was a law enforcement officer before all this started so moving forward and, and having a new career path, but giving back and being able to be come alongside women. So that was a celebration for me, um, just being able to impart that knowledge that I had gained and giving that back um, to the community and to other women um, who were in the fight as well, because it sucks, like it's not fun. It's, it's terrible to have to go through yes, some of these absolutely. things, but our group tends to be a little bit more positive yes. and a little bit more optimistic. So we're smiling, we're a little bit more crass than most, but you know, we, you gotta get through it. <laughs> <laughs> wrong with that. Yes. What about you? I would agree with that 100%. <laughs> I never had a party or celebration, nothing like that. Um, but I think I always tell people like using your negative experience and turning it into mm -hmm. something positive. That's kind of how like I felt like I've kind of taken my life back from cancer. Yeah. So I mean, we like I said, we do a lot with suicide awareness as um, my, the viewers know that I attempted in college and I've lost five friends and I suffer from depression and I work with them, the regional chairman and so forth. And we always say as we have the support groups and things like that, where we became members of a group we never wanted to be a part Absolutely. of. Absolutely. But I have a feeling kind of in a sort of similar situation for you ladies, it's the, the groups became friends, the friends became family. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would, I would wholeheartedly agree. 
And I think that it's always interesting when something like this happens, like the folks that do rally around you in such a, a significant way. For me, I never had imagined that um, my law enforcement family would come along me in the way that they did. Um, I've actually launched this new initiative called Blue Goose Pink for Pink Ribbon Girls. So if you guys see a whole bunch of officers running around with pink on, it's because they're nice. supporting Pink Ribbon <laughs> Girls. <laughs> they have a band, a band is a meal. So it's, it's, it's really exciting to see folks like that that just come in and support you in ways. But it is true, this is the family that we did not have want or wish for, mm -hmm. but now that we're here, we can support each other in very significant and profound ways. Okay. Absolutely. So um, just to wrap up, what is in the future for Pink Ribbon Girls? Moving uh, into any events, 2020? Like yes, Blue Goes Pink is, is roaring right now. Um, our CEO is in St. Louis right now for Ignite the Fight, but um, just a lot of merchandise and things like that just to keep the funds through the doors because cancer doesn't stop, so we can't stop. Perfect. How do we find the information? Somebody watching right now, where do we send them? We go to pinkribbongirls.org or Ignite the Fight Collective, where they can purchase merchandise for the month of October or any time, because this is this is year-round. We're, we're doing this work year-round. Thank you so much for what you do, ladies. I'm so glad you're still here. Thank yes. You. Thank you so much, and <laughs> thank, thank you for coming on the show. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we are going to carve pumpkins if you guys want to stick around for the melee that might be that. <laughs> so... But thank you ladies so much, and we'll be right back with more Gem City. Heiny, tushy, badonkadonk, call it what you want, but talk to your doctor, because the American Cancer Society says colon cancer is a leading cause of cancer deaths in the U.S. I was diagnosed with colon cancer, but I might have avoided it completely if I just had my keister checked. So get off those juicy doubles and go get your rump shaker screened so you can say you literally saved your own a Can we change padonkadonk? All right, welcome back to, wow, that is, I've been sitting there a long time. <laughs> welcome back to Gem City tonight. I'm Andrew Medicitis, as you notice, next to me is Elton John, AKA, no, I'm just gonna call you Elton John the entire time. Gonna... That's fine. That's fine. My hair is different now, so. Clearly. I and try you... to match the pumpkin. This is true. Well, obviously sticking with the October theme, we had the Pink Ribbon Girls, we had the Haunted Houses, and one of the things that always happens is we carve pumpkins and then eventually get smashed by a high school kid. But before that, we have the fun of carving them, picking them, and going through them. So, Ricky is actually gonna help me, because she's decided to study, you just studied <laughs> up on, you're a nerd. I'm a gigantic nerd, yes. Okay. Pumpkin aficio aficionado, that's my. Aficionado? Y yes, that thing, if we could put that under my name, God, spell it are, correctly, I can't You are so good right now. All right, so to English start with, me. Everybody starts with, you gotta pick a pumpkin. So, but there's a science to this. It isn't willy-nilly, it isn't just kind of how it looks. What is the technique? Yes, so there's a science. It's not just like, oh, this is the perfect pumpkin for carving a jack o' <laughs> Stop. I'm not gonna stop. Um, so when you go and look for a pumpkin, you're gonna wanna look for one that has a stem still kind of green. You don't want one that's dried out. I got these at the store, so I didn't really pick it at a patch, so I didn't have much to say. And then when you pop the stem off, you wanna try to keep as much stem there as possible. And that <laughs> leads me to, here, take a knife. What? So you are going to cut into the pumpkin, but not on the top. When you hollow out your pumpkin, you're gonna hollow it out from the bottom. Why? Like the, everyone in their entire life has started down from the top. So the stem of the pumpkin is where it's getting all of its nutrients. If you keep the stem on longer, then it's gonna mm. continue getting its nutrients and it's not gonna dry out. So we gotta flip this. So you're gonna forward. flip it over and not break the stem. Thank you, doctor. All right. So you're gonna <laughs> cut up. <coughs> However you want to do that from the top and not... Is there like a radius I need or...? No, I mean the smaller diameter? the hole, the more moisture stays inside of the pumpkin. <laughs> I said moisture. I hate that word. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Oh, you're doing like a star shape. No, I'm just <laughs> trying to do it. <laughs> so yeah, you want to, the idea is to keep as much moisture in there as possible, but you're going to want a big enough hole to where you can stick your hand in there. <laughs> All right, that's good. This is not taking. That's a By the way, for people who don't know, I hate pumpkins. I hate pumpkin spice latte. I hate everything. Okay, you're, wow. Okay. Just pop that bad boy off. All right. All right. Another way to continue keeping your pumpkin as fresh as possible so is that when you gut all of the seeds out of it, you want to try to do it in one spiral motion. You just, just, get, just stick your hand in there. I have you by big hands. Okay. Your hand can fit in there. That's fine. Okay. So, you can use this spoon, I don't okay. know where you're going, 
And in one motion, try to get as much of the guts out as possible. Your hand can fit in there. This is gross. <laughs> you can't always, just you know, turn, roast these afterwards. Turn it upside down and just start dumping. Yeah, that's not one motion, but you know. So just like, when, and you also have to not be afraid to just get in there. I'm assuming vets are it's very... the oddest <laughs> segment we've ever done on the show so far. Pumpkins. <laughs> not just that, the fact that I'm birthing pumpkin seeds right now. Anyways. Hush! Hush! <laughs> Okay, dump all that in there. The so miracle you, of life. Now you have to decide how you want to carve your pumpkin. What, what would you like to carve on your pumpkin? Uh, how about a gem? Gem City Nine. Okay. So when you're carving pumpkins, you want to have as the show's small, only 50 minutes yeah, long. Are you good? I guess. Okay. I guess as small area as possible, not carved out if you want it to last long. Okay. We're probably at seven inch. <laughs> I don't know. Don't look. All right, so I want to do a gym. I'm assuming so. I don't know if I started it. <laughs> All right, so does it matter the size? Why don't you. Oh, oh yeah, draw it. Good call. We're at like, just, you know, commercial break. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to go to commercial break. By the time I get back, what camera am I in here? I don't know. By the time I get back, I will have drawn the gem and we will start cutting. So stick around for more Gem City tonight. Let's do this. What is your steeds coming up? All right, we are back with, not that one, me. <laughs> All right, we're back with Gem City tonight. So I've drawn my face, I'm doing something simple. So, just gonna carve. Yeah, you just jab it in there. Draw if you hands. want to start a hole, you can use this. Okay. So if you did a more intricate design, you would want to do all your smaller details first before you did any big holes. That way your pumpkin stays sturdy while you're carving them. Okay. But you just did a bunch of gigantic, I mean, you did freehand it. They do make the stencils, you just wet those before you put them on your pumpkin. And okay. And then they'll stick better instead of trying to tape them. And then after you carve your pumpkin, if you cover it in Vaseline, do not bleach a pumpkin. That's like on social media right now. That'll kill squirrels. But Why would you bleach a pumpkin? To keep them to last longer and keep the squirrels to not eat them. But if you cover them with Vaseline, they'll last longer too. So if you ever needed a new reason to use Vaseline. Uh -huh. Now, I always heard that the, if you make, make a, the hole large or whatever, and the oxygen gets to it, it dies faster. Correct. Okay. Ha <laughs> I was right. So you're lucky if a pumpkin will last about four days. Really? Yeah before it starts to shrivel up and, I mean, unless that's the look you're going for, is a shriveled up, soggy looking pumpkin. I mean, Fred might use it for the haunted house. True. But if you want it to stay firm like this, yeah. Also, they suggest if you're like really into pumpkin carving, you can use clay modeling tools and instead of actually carving the pumpkins out, you scrape at them. What up, so it's you're working, really I'm doing it. Yourself. I'm doing it. You would scrape at the skin of your pumpkin. Why? Because you don't want to ever actually penetrate a hole into the pumpkin. Because then you're creating oxygen to get to it. It's gonna oh, it was like, so what just... if I'm carving into it? That's what you told me to do. <laughs> well, unless you are a model slayer Sculpt. sculptor, yeah, that's that word. I don't think you're going to use clay tools. Interesting. So, is there a specific, like a lot of people are always worried about using like actual candle and fire, are people going to, um, that's, uh, are people going to like the uh, little LED battery powered ones now or? Yes, yeah, so it's better for your pumpkin, uh, not just to reduce risk of fire, but the smoke coming from a fire will actually also dehydrate your pumpkin, causing it to 
also wrinkle and dry out faster. You're really murdering that thing. Okay, <laughs> didn't know I was going for style points here. I won't stick the landing. Sorry, my bird. I'm also running out of time. No, you got like three minutes left. Now there, does, is it the same for white pumpkins or? Yes, okay. you can't, any gourd. So pumpkin, squash, those little things. The Did you just have a stroke, any what? Gourd. 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 A gourd. Okay. You know, like the weird shaped things that typically are on the centerpiece of your Thanksgiving table. You can carve those. Who are you having Thanksgiving with? Pilgrims. Clearly. <laughs> They Myself. actually ate deer the first Thanksgiving, but you know. That's just... All that aside. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's the next holiday. I'm allowed to talk about it. We're not there yet. <laughs> but you can carve other fruits: watermelons, apples, anything with a hard skin like this. If you cut it in half; it'll fall in. Hey! Oh, well. Let's see your masterpiece. This is what I've done. Ta-da! Huzzah! It almost, I feel like that should be the smiley face to the character in Tim's book. <laughs> you didn't read it, never mind. So, four days, and what is the proper way to dispose of a pumpkin? And just throw it in the trash? Um, I guess you could. Your squirrels will probably eat it if you leave it out. You could always throw it in a compost bin. If you put it in your garden, you'll get pumpkins the next year. So, so just automatically grow from the seeds. So you can plant the seeds and you'll get them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I've thrown a pumpkin this size before in my garden and have gotten pumpkins the next year. Hmm. All right then. Well, because, you know, it's never a show unless I feel like a, a doofus. So here's my standard, which camera am I in? I don't know. Right here, four. This is my masterpiece, okay? Uh, Ricky, go ahead and turn yours around. <laughs> Are you out of your gourd? Are you? <laughs> I am out of my gourd. That thing lights up too, or it's got it, lights underneath it? Yes, so I put a candle on it, and it is Slimer with Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> Special Ed Pumpkin, artisanal pumpkin. Without a stencil. That was all hand. You didn't have to. Draw it. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> all right, we will have these tips on how to do pumpkin carving and everything for pumpkin care to pumpkin disposal and everything in between on our Gem City Tonight website on Facebook as well. So stick around. I'm going to revel, um, revel in my pumpkin and go back to my desk. And we'll be right back with more Gem City Tonight. It wasn't always like this. My friends were slowly going away. They found other people. And the world was slowly revolving around me. With my classes becoming harder and harder, and the constant stress of applying to college, it seemed like suicide was the answer to all of this. It was so easy to do, right there, right there and then. I could have done it, but someone reached out to me. This person actually cared for me, talked to me, and understood me. Suicide is never the answer. Know the signs, find the words, and reach out. <laughs> 